we teach our BA students here this course, so I come into that course giving case studies, and I looked at um, human development in Nepal, and you think, okay, brilliant, I mean, I don't think first year students in the entire university have an entire lecture devoted to Nepal, so question, why Nepal? Well, because the UNDP said it was a top mover. Out of all the countries in the world, in the last 30 years, Nepal has improved its, GD, its human development index better than anybody else. I thought, wow, let's have a look. So I went and had a look, and basically, um, despite all the problems in Nepal, its uh, income had gone up, but that wasn't the main driver. There were a couple of oil economies that improved, and that was their GDP, pushing up the human development index. wasn't that. Um, education had improved, but wasn't really that. It was life expectancy. Now, I thought, okay, where does that come from then? So I looked a bit deeper in the statistics. All of these statistics are provided by the UNDP. So one of the numbers I found, I mean, they wiped out malaria in the low lands in Nepal. That was all very beneficial. One of the numbers I came across was the number for maternal deaths. How many women die in childbirth? And in 2010, it was something like 800 women for every 100,000 births. And that is about 100 times higher than in the West. Amazing death rate. And three years later, it was down to 170. I thought, hang on, you know, there's no way. It must, be a, it must be a misprint. It must be 720 or something. It can't be 172. So I tracked it back, and it's not a misprint. So I thought, how on earth do you reduce female mortality in a period of three years? So I went through uh, the information, and what had they done? They had a policy for producing uh, female uh, volunteer uh, health assistants, several tens of thousands. This was policy 30, 40 years ago. They can't afford doctors. So women volunteers come in and they act as sort of first aid uh, workers attached to villages. Then about uh, five years ago, they started training midwives. Sorry, 10 years ago, to be precise. Training midwives. They trained up about 4,000 midwives who could actually help these volunteer workers to give them advice on how to go about women in pregnancy. Then they increased the funding to hospitals so that there were more hospital beds for pregnancies and more drugs available. And specifically, they made anti-hemorrhaging drugs, uh, blood, clotting, blood clotting drugs available in the villages as well, because they thought that hemorrhaging um, after birth is one of the major causes. Then they gave grants to women to be able to travel from the village for antenatal care three or four times before they gave birth and to visit the hospital. The result within this three or four year period is that the number of women who had an attendant, either at a hospital or um, an assistant, rose from something like 30% to something like 70%. Now, all of those things happen because detailed statistics, none of it happens because of the index. The Human Development Index will tell you absolutely nothing, either about the location of this specific problem or any of the solutions to help solve it. So you have to ask yourself, why do we want these numbers? Well, the UNDP likes these numbers because it can brag about having the number and it can name and shame, where are you on the ranking? And okay, it gives you a rough idea of where you are in the world of human development. Policy makers don't need the numbers, they need the numbers underneath. They don't need the index, they like the numbers that actually go to make it up, because that's where you can actually do some work. So who wants the numbers? Political scientists, political economists. Because with these numbers, they can throw our fictive number on human development, they can and they do throw it against our completely rubbish numbers on GDP for the developing world that they want to do, and they give you a statistical result to say these two things are linked to another fictive index governance or another index of trust or another index of fractionalization. It's scientists, so-called scientists, who want to pseudo-precise um, their science to make it, uh, Saeed, to make it really scientific. 
So it looks like the other sciences other people do. And that's why this course is important. Because if we don't undermine this kind of scientific uh, experimentation at the source, then you'll start believing that all of this can be proved. And it can't be proved. You can anticipate it happening. You can think, is it likely to happen? You know, put your brain on and think, yeah, if a society is riven by political conflict, by social conflict, then it's likely to lead to war. Then people are unlikely to invest in it. It doesn't take a scientist to come to that. It does take a concerned citizen to come to that and actually be able to say something. 